This video is about Coulomb's law, but you could also see this as being a bit of an introduction to fields, because I'm gonna go through some of the things that all fields have in common. So Coulomb's law is an inverse square law. It relates the force of any two charged particles to K, which is the Coulomb's law constant, times by the product of the two charges, that's Q1 times Q2, over R squared, that's the inverse square law part. So as with any inverse square law, if you double the distance, then the magnitude of the force is a quarter of what it was before. So this is just a diagram of how to draw a radial field. Radial fields are fields around point charges. And we always do field lines with an arrow which indicates the direction which a positive charge would move. Okay, the direction of the force on a positive charge. If you're drawing a radial field, it's important to draw at least probably four, but I normally do eight lines, which are equally spaced radially around the charge. And it's important to get that arrow right. You'll be familiar with the idea of attraction and repulsion, but actually it's important to note that that is contained within the Coulomb's law equation. Because if you have a positive and a negative, then the product of those is negative, and negative implies towards. If you have two of the same charges, so positive and positive, or negative and negative, then the product of those is positive, and that implies away, or in other words, repel. The other type of field that you need to be familiar with is perhaps a bit easier, it's a uniform field. And this is typically going to be between two charged plates, and here you're going to need to draw several, at least four probably, field lines, which are all parallel and all equally spaced. But again, it's important to get those arrows in the right direction, the direction of the force on a positive charge. So here's where things are going to start to be unfamiliar and new for you. These blue lines are lines of equipotential. Now be familiar with the term potential difference, and it's when you have a difference in potential that you can cause a current. So this might be another new thing, the idea of an electric field strength. As I'll demonstrate to you in a later video, the idea of field strength shouldn't be so new to you. Electric field strength is defined as the potential difference over the distance between those two points. So it could be between two equipotentials, or it could be between two charged plates. The easiest way to draw your equipotentials is to think about your field lines. We know the field is strongest where field lines are closest. From our definition of what an electric field is, E equals V over D, we know the distance between potential differences is larger when the field is weaker. So you must make sure that you draw your equipotentials further apart, the further away from the radial field. And the last thing to get right is just to always think about drawing your equipotentials at right angles to those field lines. So we're just using the Van de Graaff generator and this ball on a string and this dome which is a zero potential to investigate Coulomb's law. So really just how the forces change as the ball becomes charged and discharged. The understanding fields is all about really understanding how the equations are related. So how the force is related to the equation for field strength, for example. So here's the equation for field strength, the force over charge. And clearly if you, if you take Coulomb's law and you divide by one charge, then you get this second equation for electric field strength. But I think a deep understanding of fields, really, you want to start from this definition of what a potential is. So a potential varies with K, Q over R. So it's an inverse rule with distance from a charge, essentially. So if you double all the distance then you'd half the potential and how does that link to energy you have heard the word potential with reference to energy well if you put a charge there then you'd have an energy so if you multiply that potential by charge you would have an energy just a word of warning here because it's really easy to confuse that e for electric field strength with e for energy how do we get from that potential to electric field strength well we just divide by r again and how do we get from that electric field strength to a force? Well, we multiply by Q again. So it's like saying, if we have an electric field strength and we put a charge there, then we have a force. The beauty of this is it's the same with all fields. And I'll just come back to this and I'll go through gravitational fields. And hopefully you'll see that they also have potentials. They also have potential energies. They also have field strengths. And then we can start to see, okay, the, all these things are the same for different fields and that's going to help us understand, that's going to help us explain and importantly do calculations with this quite tricky seeming at first algebra. I think this will make loads of sense once you go through gravity fields because you're already used to the idea of a gravitational potential energy so stay tuned for that.